Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We have sine x to the fourth power plus cosine x to the fourth power equals one half, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to use the double angle formulas. Remember, cosine 2x can be written in three ways. One of them is cosine squared minus sine squared, but then by using the Pythagorean identity, we can also write it as 2 cosine squared minus 1, also, and also 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So how do we use these? Well, these identities are super helpful, especially if you want to reduce uh, power. I think it's called reduction of powers, and it's also used uh, with integrals. So for example, if you take the first one, we can go ahead and isolate cosine squared from here. So cosine squared will basically be you know, if you just isolate it, we can basically write it as 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2. So all you have to do is solve for that. And sine squared written can be written similarly, but with a 1 minus cosine 2x. Because what happens is if you switch these two around, you're going to get 2 sine squared equals 1 minus cosine 2x and then divide by 2 and you'll get it. So these two identities will be very helpful for solving this equation with the first method. And we do have the fourth power, so here is what we're going to do. When you have fourth powers, this also goes for integrals, go ahead and write them as squared squared, right? So by using this identity, we get this equation, which can be handled with the double angle formulas. Let's replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine 2x over 2, and cosine squared with 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. And then the rest is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is call cosine 2x something. We're going to use substitution again. Let's go ahead and call this c. And then just plug it in and you'll get the answer in terms of cosine 2x. And then you can go to x from there. So our equation is going to look like this. 1 minus c squared plus 1 plus c squared. And then we're going to get a 4 at the bottom. Multiply both sides by 4 and you're going to get a 2. Let's go ahead and expand it. Obviously, the terms in the middle are going to cancel out, leaving us with 2 plus 2c squared equals 2, which means c squared equals 0. This is nice because 0 is easy to handle. Cosine squared 2x, but it, it just means that c is 0 because c squared, squared cannot be 0 without c being 0. So cosine 2x equals 0, and now we're going to look at the possibilities. If you think about it, which cosine can be or cosine of each angle can be 0. There are two values. One of them is pi over 2. And then, of course, you can always add multiples of 2 pi. And then the other one is going to be 3 pi over 2 plus 2k pi. Now, we're going to solve for x, divide both sides by 2. You're going to get n pi. And this is obviously going to give you pi over 4. And then you're just going to add pi to it, 5 pi over 4. When you add another pi to it, it's going to be 9 up pi over 4, which is going to bring you back. So there's going to be this many solutions, infinitely many, in other words. And then the other branch is just going to be 3 pi over 4. And then if you just add pi to it, it's going to be 7 pi over 4, and so on and so forth. All right? So this is, for, this is the first method, taking advantage of the double angle formulas, but using them backwards so that we can reduce the power. So it all depends on power. Then we can definitely use this with the 6 power. Any even power is fine. I believe I've done some uh, videos before on 8th powers. I don't know if I did 10th power, but we've done uh, a couple of problems like this, this one. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And the second method uses a different idea, right? So we have sine x to the 4th power plus cosine x to the fourth power equals one half. Obviously, at this point, if you want to guess your answer, you could do that. For example, if x is pi over four, it's definitely going to work because its square is going to be, um, sine x is going to be one over root two, its square is going to be one half, and then if you square it again, one fourth, and one fourth plus one fourth is one half. So you can think of it that way too, but we could also do it differently. Uh, we can just kind of write it the same way. This Let this be sine uh, x to the fourth power, and then write this as cosine squared squared. But this time, instead of using the double angle formula, use the Pythagorean identity. Since sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, cosine squared x can be replaced with 
1 minus sine squared x, right? And of course, that'll be squared and then add it to the fourth power. And this is going to give us another equation, which is going to be quartic, but biquadratic. Okay, let's see how that goes. We have sine x to the fourth from here. And then from this one, we're going to get 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus sine x to the fourth power again. And those powers are going to be added, which is going to give us 2 sine x to the fourth power. If you multiply everything by 2, you're going to get 4 sine x to the fourth power minus 4 sine squared x. And then uh, 1, you're going to get a, when you multiply by 2, you're going to get a 1 here and you're going to have a 2 here. So that's going to turn out to be 1. Now this is nice because this is a perfect square. And that's perfect, isn't it? So we can write this as 2 sine squared x minus 1 squared equals 0. And from here, we are still using x, not 2x, right? Because we didn't use double angles. This means that 2 sine squared x is equal to 1 or sine squared x is equal to 1 half. Now, both of these solutions should be valid. There are two values for whose, uh, there are two numbers whose square equals 1 half. Those numbers are 1 over 1, 1 over square root of 2 and negative 1 over square root of 2. And this pretty much gives you all the multiples of pi over 4 degrees as before. Make sense? I hope it does. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.